Hi, my name is Amanda, and this is my podcast, Amanda Mix. This is the seventh episode, and if you found me on YouTube, you can find all of the show notes uh, on my blog, to which I will link in the description below. Um, if you found me through my blog, thank you for following, and um, I'm having a lot of fun with the folks on Instagram, so I hope that you will also follow me on there. All of my social media information is included in this post on the blog, so um, definitely connect with me on Ravelry, Instagram, and um, YouTube. I have not been able to get to a podcast in a long time because my bathrooms are under construction. I'm actually doing a renovation for two bathrooms and three closets right now, so we are beyond crazy. I was telling folks on the blog this morning, I'm on day 28 of a 21-day project. Um, so I'm a little frazzled, I'm past done with it, but um, the tile and the grout went in, tile went in yesterday, grout went in today, and it looks like the end is in sight, so I'm going to um, not complain and just be very hap happy that I'm soon going to have two brand new bathrooms and three excellent closets to put all of the stuff in that we've just been using out of a pile for the last month. So, um, in fact, when I finish the podcast, I'm going to go prime and paint my new closet. So, definitely connect with me on Instagram um, for pictures of the house and other not yarny things. Uh, I'm also on Ravelry, and all of that information will be right there in, in the blog post. So, um, I want to catch you guys up on um, some yarn purchases that I've made. In the past, um, yarn for me has basically either come as a gift, very nice yarn has come as a gift, or been purchased um, on clearance because it was discontinued or only one ball left or something like that from my local yarn shops. Um, I had a couple of very specific projects in mind that I wanted to to do and they needed very specific yarns. Um, so I went ahead and made what I feel like was big yarn purchases. I know for some people it's just a drop in the bucket or a little bit of stash, but I felt like they were big yarn purchase, mainly purchases mainly because for me I've never ordered mail order yarn and um, ordered yarn off the internet. And I was a little spooked about the colors and whether or not I would like them. And then I have never just dropped a hundred dollars worth of yarn, hundred dollars at a time in yarn. So I was kind of spooked by it all and thought, wow, I'm really gonna need to knit a lot of stuff now to justify it. So five projects worth of yarn at one time, which is a little crazy, but it's a lot of yarn. So, um, to get right down to it, I made my sister a beautiful Christmas gift. It was an embroidered apron, and um, she loved it. Then, not two weeks later, I get this message from her on Facebook, and it's a picture of a gal in a beautiful shawl, and she says, hey, can you make this for me? And I was like, well, isn't she exploiting me now? Um, she does not knit, she spins, um, and she does a lot of embroidery, and she sews, um, but she doesn't knit, and she doesn't really crochet. She, uh, she knows how to crochet, but she doesn't spend a lot of time doing it. And so she said, will you do this for me? And I had a great idea, and I said, I love the shawl. How about I make one for you and make one for me, and we will have shawls together. So that was what got me started on the yarn buying spree. And of course, then if you get to 50 bucks, you get free shipping and so on and so forth. So it just kind of snowballed from my sister wanting a shawl. Long story made longer. I, um, let me just grab here. I... was able to ascertain from the picture that the shawl that she wanted was the Dream Bird shawl that's on Ravelry. It is a triangular wedge 
shawl. It's built from one side to the other in a triangular wedge. And the shaping of the feathers, it's kind of a bird motif. It's called Dream Bird. And I feel like I'm repeating myself so many times today. My brain is totally checked out with all of these decisions on grout colors and yarn colors and colors colors and are we going to lay the tile by thirds or halves or diagonal or blah blah so I am totally fried. I'm sorry if I keep saying the same thing over and over again. It's the dream bird shawl. Dream bird, dream bird. Now I've said it five times. Um, so in order to get the right look in the feathers you need a yarn that is that has a long color gradient. Um, self striping might work if it's the right yarn, but I wanted a long gradual color gradient and f and it was fingering weight. And so for that I found um, Knit Picks Chroma Fingering. Now I was really proud of myself that I had scanned the web and come to this excellent conclusion. What I didn't know at the time was that you can go right into Ravelry, all the projects, all the other people who have made the same shawl, and just search what yarn they're using, and a zillion people used chroma fingering, uh, which I found very affirming after the fact, after I'd already decided that's what I wanted to use, but had I done that before, it would have saved me a lot of time Googling gentle gradient slow color change fingering weight yarn but anyhow I love this because it's got a little bit of a halo and it does have that that slow color change um, so she chose for hers the um, weather vane which is very gentle aqua teal um, cadet blue transitions and then for her background, she also chose, a lot of people did solid, but some people made really stunning um, shawls using two separate color changing yarns. So she chose the Knit Picks Chroma in um, Fog Bank. And so it's it goes basically from ivory to a kind of taupey tan to a, a light light mousy gray I would say so I am so excited about those um, together and I think they're gonna look excellent but if this gives you any indication um, as to the difference between me and my sister you can see that this is what she chose for the um, project and this is what I chose for mine this is the Knit Picks Chroma Fingering in Red Velvet. It's got some dark mauve, hot pink, and cotton candy pink. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's not really red velvet at all. It's not red. Um, look at all those colors. And so what I chose to go with this, I, I went a different route because I knew that I wanted a really bold feather color um, but a lot of the chroma has such a wide variation. Um, some of them that I loved, I really loved the lakefront colorway. I loved, um, I can't remember, the wildflowers colorway. But they go from navy to ivory um, in their color transitions. And so I got stuck thinking if I do a dark background, then it won't have the contrast that I want against the navy, but if I do a light background, it won't have the contrast that I want against the ivory. And there's no real way in the feather, in the building of the feathers, it uses short rows within these wedges to build um, feather formations. There's no real way to tell where your gradient color change is going to happen. So. Um, I got nervous about that and I went a completely different direction with this nitpick stroll tonal fingering um, in the colorway Raven and I really hope it's coming through on the camera because it's stunning it is black 
an eggplant, and a little bit of indigo blue, but just enough pink in the eggplant that it really brings out some of the dark, the dark color in this um, red velvet. And so I am so excited about seeing the way that these two go together. So feathers and background there. Very exciting, very exciting. I told my sister since she got the idea in my head and since sometimes it can be hard to knit two of the same thing, I am going to cast on and knit her shawl first because I know she wants it and loves it. And then if for some reason I hated the pattern because it is miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of garter stitch, um, and I just can't bring myself to do the same one over again, then at least she will have her lovely dream bird shawl and I will find something else to do with my yarn because I love it. But I do think that it's going to be nice and I do think that um, we will have twinsy, twinsy, modified twinsy um, sister shawls by the time that is all said and done. So um, that was, that was my um, Knit Picks yarn order. Then I was, I was in the library. We meet every first Thursday in the public library with our bird club. And I um, had not yet, uh, watching a squirrel go at my bird feeder. I'm gonna try to sit here and ignore it. And then that way I won't have to embarrass myself by being a crazy woman going after him. Um, so, if you um, don't know a lot about birders, there's a difference between birders and bird watchers. Bird watchers are people who sit in their house and um, generally have feeders and they watch the birds come to their house. Birders are crazy people who uh, go to extreme lengths to <laughs> see a bird so that we can check it off of a list. Uh, we participate in a um, citizen science project that is hosted by Cornell University and so anytime we see a bird, like on our snow days or, or if we go out to take a tally of how many migratory ducks are at the lake or migratory war warblers or so on and so forth. When we see those birds, we note the time, the place, and the um, situation and report that to the database at Cornell. So um, we are birders and we do crazy things to see birds. We go out in the dark, we go out at 6 a.m., we go out when it's 12 degrees outside, we go out when it's 96 degrees outside. Long story made longer, we were at our bird meeting and I thought, well, while I'm at the public library, I'll pick up some knitting books. And our friend from Bird Club came out and said, you knit? Of course, famous, famous last words, right? Um, yeah, I knit. And he says, I've been looking for someone who can knit me a pair of mittens, really heavy duty, thick mittens. Nothing keeps your hands warm like mittens do. And that's right, he's got a point. And so when when we're birding, the only thing you really need your hands for is holding your binoculars and adjusting them. And you mostly have a little tab that you can adjust with your middle fingers on top of your binoculars. And then you get back to the car and you take off your mittens and you write down all of your notes about the things that you've seen. And so I had been considering making a pair of thrummed mitts for myself for that exact same purpose. And um, then he says, I'd really love a pair of mittens. It'll keep me warm. So this got me thinking, okay, I need really warm wool that is going to work well for um, some heavy duty man nature trekking mittens. So I uh, went on to Craftsy and I got this Lopi. Let Lopi. Craftsy has it already discounted, but even more discounted if you buy it in a pack of three or five. Um, so I bought my Lopi in in uh, three ball packets. I didn't know what color my friend would want, so 
uh, I found a pattern for men's mittens that are knit holding two strands of yarn and um, he ultimately well so I picked four colors so that they could have a little tweedy look to them and then I would combine two colors so I ended up buying the chocolate lopi and the oatmeal lopi off of um, Craftsy and I have three of each of these balls. Um, then to go with these I bought this Cascade 220 Heather in what Craftsy was calling Turtle, Turtle I think, Turtle Heather, which I love, um, to go with the oatmeal color and I um, bought this which Craftsy was calling it's this Cascade 220 Heather as well. Uh, to go with the chocolate, uh, Craftsy called this color Shire, and it is beautiful. It's got, um, it's mostly a forest green, but it's got some, some bluier and yellowier flecks in it, and I love it to bits. So ultimately, my friend chose the darker combination of the two and when I get around to doing the podcast on what's on my needles uh, right now, excuse me, um, I will show you how that mitten is coming. Um, I made one more yarn purchase this past week and it was probably the most adrenaline fueled yarn purchase ever. So, imagine there's a backstory. I um, have been volunteering with my local yarn shop, which is also my local quilt shop, um, for the past five months or so, helping them get their social media squared away and design and um, manage their new website. So, um, she has been been she basically the shop is a one woman show and she runs it with the help of a lot of volunteers so on any given day you'll go in there and one of her friends or her sister or someone will be doing the fabric cutting the fabric and then another person will be putting the bolts away and someone will be teaching classes and so on and so forth and so it's this really great collaborative um, atmosphere that I really enjoy uh, so she's been giving me a discount when I go in and buy yarn and buy things just as a way to say thank you I can't pay you for my new website but I really appreciate what you're doing so um, that is the place that I bought all of my um, Sestari yarn the heavyweight worsted that I made my fingerless mitts out of and my conversationalist hat and it's local yarn and I love it but at that shop there has been a skein of Heritage Cascade uh, hand-painted sock that I have lusted over and I pick it up and look at it and unwrap the skein and look at it again and then ball it back up and say no not today and then unwrap it and ball it back up and say no I don't I don't need to pay for more yarn because I have plenty of yarn I mean, at present, I have five balls of sock weight yarn that need projects. They're just in my stash. Um, so it wasn't until this past month that I started knitting a pair of socks and feeling empowered and say, hey, I can make more out of sock yarn than just a shawl. So um, I have loved this yarn and she even said to me she saw me looking at it one day and she said I've had that one skein of yarn in here for so long that if you want it I will give you even more of a discount than normal just to take it away from here it was her only one of hand paints that she had left and she had a boatload of other sock yarn and people just um, people for some reason that her customers just aren't that into sock yarn so I don't think she was planning on restocking. Long story, gosh, I keep saying that, long story made longer, because um, it's not a long story made shorter. Uh, 
I was in the shop right before, like the day before my bathrooms were demoed, so it's right about a month ago. It was 19 degrees outside. We'd gone to the lake, or at least I'd gone to the lake. I was by myself to look for ducks, made my checklist, came back, sat in the parking lot until 10 a.m. the shop opened. Then came on in, and I'm wandering around the shop, not doing much, just visiting, because I was out there. And one of the shop volunteers came up to me and said, your bumper was already messed up, wasn't it? And I said, no, nothing's wrong with my bumper. And she said, oh, that's a problem because a lady just rear-ended you and I went out there and she looked at it and I looked at it and we thought that it was just fine. Uh, so I told her she could leave because it was fine. <laughs> and it's not fine. Now that I'm back inside and looking out at the car through the window, I can see from the other side that the bumper is really messed up. So I was hoping that it was just already that way, but I figured I'd find you. So she didn't even find me until the woman was gone. I was so upset. So I said, well, who was she? You know, and I am the youngest person who frequents this store by 30 years. So no one could remember. Oh yeah, she comes in here all the time, but, but we can't remember her name. Oh yeah, she's lived in Farmville for 40 years, but we can't remember her name. Well, when she comes back in here next time, I'll tell her that she needs to pay for your bumper. And I'm thinking that's going to go over like a lead balloon. Just walk in and say to a customer, oh, by the way, um, last time you were here, you had a hit and run. Um, so how about you cough up your insurance information so I can give it to my other customer? So I was quite defeated and came home and I had to tell Julian about it. He was upset. He's like, why didn't you call the police? It's a hit and run. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to give this lady... I didn't want to treat this lady like it was a hit and run because she sincerely tried to make it right. She didn't have any way of knowing whose the car was and I'm sure she felt like the lady who came out who told her it was okay probably owned the car. Why wouldn't you tell someone that it's okay when you don't own the car? So anyhow, I'm sitting around one day dealing with my workmen, dealing with my bathrooms and I get this message on Facebook Messenger from the lady who owns the store. She says, call the store right away. So I pick up the phone, call the store, and she says, the lady who hit your car is here. And I told her that it really messed up your bumper and she's got all of her information here and she's the nicest thing ever and come by the store and pick it up come by and grab this little piece of paper that she wrote everything down on and run down to the store and run down to the shop, you know, and make your claim. And I was over the moon. It had been a whole month. And sure enough, the lady came in to buy some fabric and the shopkeeper said, oh, by the way, last time you were here, you hit the girl's bumper and you didn't even talk to the girl who owned the car. So, you know, Where's your inf insurance information? So that just turned out the best possible way. And the adjuster's coming to look at the car, and I'm going to get a new bumper, and I'm happy, happy, joy, joy. So when I went in to get my insurance information, I was so over the moon that I bought the yarn. And it's just, you know, I keep telling myself, well, you know, it's just red yarn. It's just red yarn. Um, but it's really, really pretty red yarn, and I just can't get over it. I don't know if the camera shows you, but it's got just tiny bibs and bobs of a darker red maroon and navy. And I thought it would make the perfect pair of socks. So now I just have to be very thoughtful and um, pick the perfect pattern for my 
oh so pretty yarn. I just squeeze it and love it and I don't even know why it was such a big deal for me to not get this yarn and not get this yarn and not get this yarn but then get it when I was really happy. So anyhow, happy yarn and a new bumper and I'm going to do something fun and exciting and special with my yarn. Oh, and I bought this yarn. I, you know, she said she was going to give me a discount. I don't even know what I finally paid for it because the price tag on it was $17. I also needed some fabric um, for a quilt project that I'm working on that I'll show you someday. I've, I've posted it on Instagram, but I'll show you someday. And um, so I bought a half a yard of fabric that was supposed to be $7 and something and a skein of sock yarn for $17 and my total was $16 and some change. And what made it even more happy was that that morning I found an old leftover gift card that my mom had given me for Christmas two Christmases ago. Um, I've played with the yarn so much that it just un undid itself, but it is just so pretty. So it was all free on the gift card, and and I'll remember. I remember Julian. We had this debate about this gift card because. Um, when mom gave me that gift card, it had been purchased from Walmart, but it was a Visa gift card, and I got it confused. And I remember I had lost my job, and I was working part-time. Julian was in his last six months of grad school. We were getting ready to sell the house. We were getting ready to buy this house, and we were nervous, we'll say about the future and all of these things. So we were really trimming our luxury, trimming our lifestyle things. You know, we got the landline phone turned off. We weren't eating out, all of these sorts of things to pinch our pennies as we were transitioning in a really major way. So I got confused and I thought that because it had been purchased at a Walmart, that it was a Walmart gift card, but it was just a generic Visa gift card. And so I swiped, like we were in Walmart and buying a loaf of bread and salad greens or something. And so I swiped the gift card for it. And he said, what are you doing spending the good gift card on, you know, salad greens? And I was like, what do you mean? Why are you fussing at me? It's just a Walmart gift card. He says, no, it's a Visa gift card. We could spend it anywhere. And he said, there's going to come a day when we are beyond stressed and done with life that you're going to want something special. You're going to need something special. And he said, put this gift card away and save it for that day. And um, I'll just never forget him saying that. And I thought, gosh, he's taking this gift card so seriously. And I was so happy. Here we are a year later. And life has worked out. He's got a great new job. We've got a beautiful house being made more beautiful through blood, sweat, and tears. And the lady called with her insurance information about my bumper being replaced. And I found that gift card that morning. And so it all just conspired together for me to have this red sock yarn. The end. <sighs> Anyhow, so happy. Um, I think that's all I have to tell you about my yarn. I've gone on and on and on, but um, <sighs> okay. Sorry for the cut. Apparently, um, once again, my camera won't let me. Uh, record anything more than 29 minutes and 59 seconds at a time and I did not remove some other clips off of my memory card before I started filming so anyhow pardon the clip pardon the interruption um, I I gave you a really lovely goodbye uh, before I knew that my camera had um, cut me off but anyhow 
I uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope that even if you're not buying yarn, you are at least enjoying your stash and enjoying your projects, and I hope that you stay tuned for the podcast that will come probably tomorrow about um, what's on my needles these days, and so um, I think that's all I have to share. I, I got some beets. I got like five pounds of beets from my drywall guy tonight, or this morning. So tonight, in addition to painting my closets, I'm gonna make some uh, beetroot brownies, which I've never done before, but I have plenty of beets in the event that they're disgusting and won't feel too badly about tossing them. Anyhow, I hope you have a great night. I hope you make something wonderful, whether for dinner or a fibery project or a quilty project, uh, definitely connect with me on Instagram, Ravelry, or um, the blog, and let me know all about it. Have a great night. Bye-bye.